Welcome to the Deeper Life Bible Church Singles Channel, the DLBC Singles Channel. My name is Princess, and on our channel, we talk about faith, we talk about Christian relationship, we talk about how to court efficiently and prepare for um, a godly, a healthy, and a successful marriage. So if you're not, if you're new here and you have not yet subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button below because we post new videos as often as possible. Therefore, uh, you have to click that notification bell below so that you can be alerted whenever we post new videos. We are happy to have you as part of the wonderful family. We're glad that you're here and we'll be happy to have you as one of this wonderful family. If you're returning as an, as a, as an old uh, subscriber, as a member of the family already, you're very welcome again to our Miss. You're very welcome to the family of God. And we are always happy to hear your comments. We're happy to read all your advice, your points on the channel, on the, the, the Facebook page and, and the Facebook group and also the Instagram page. We're always happy. We're a very happy family of God. We're happy to, to have all of you here. I pray that this space will be a place of mutual development. We'll all develop. We'll all grow in our Christian faith. We'll know the Lord more. We'll love him more. We'll grow in grace. So do well to follow us on Instagram. If you've not done so, join our page. If you've not done so, it's called the Deeper Life Bible Church singles same thing with the group deep alive bible church singles we will be uh we have the 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 links somewhere on the video at the top or even on the pay on the youtube um home page you will see uh our uh, pages, the links to our pages and the group. You can also click from the description uh, of this video. We'll have all the information and please feel free to join the group for discussions. And with, as we talk about all these topics, all these questions that are being handled by all our mentors, all our seniors, our leaders who have gone through this before and I pray that the Lord will give us an answer of peace. Uh, quickly, we're going to jump into um, this video of today. It's a very um, strong topic, a very relevant topic to singles. Every single needs this. And before we go further, <clears throat> um, we're going to read um, a verse of the scripture, which is in... Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, chapter 16, verse 20. First of all, we'll go um, to um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13. I open my Bible. We read the King James Version and it says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. It can be the woman. Happy is the woman or the man that findeth wisdom and the man that get it understanding. So we come to this video to get understanding. Please have an open mind. And I pray that the Lord will give us wisdom and that at the end of the day, we'll be happy people. We'll, we'll, we'll have happy and godly homes, okay? So when you come, when you are coming to marriage, as young people, we come with a lot of expectation, but we soon find out after marriage, for some who have gone through marriage, you, they say marriage is a package, right? They say it's a package. <laughs> and when you receive a gift, a package from somebody, you don't know what's inside until you open the gift. Then you find out what's in the package. Same way with marriage. Sometimes you don't know everything about the person that you're getting married to. You never can know a person completely, totally. God alone knows everybody and can tell you exactly what anybody can do at any point in time. God knows it all. So as human beings, as much as we court, 
we talk, we might be friends before we got married. You don't know a person until you really start living with them. As the Bible says, the heart of man is, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm not saying that as Christians we're wicked. I'm just saying in the context of not knowing everything about somebody, their heart is deep. People are different. And some people don't even understand themselves. They don't even know who they are. <laughs> they don't even know who they are. So you can't know a person completely. So when you're coming into marriage, you need to be prepared. You need to be ready. As a woman, as a man, you need to be ready for all that marriage comes with. The goodness, some of the challenges, the love, the care, and all that makes you, that, that, that happens, the things that gets thrown at you, that makes you a strong man, a strong woman all these things that you find in marriage you need to be ready i'm going to be talking of some of those things that you should be ready uh first of all you should know that <clears throat> excuse me you should know that there might be delays when you get married okay when you're getting married you don't know what you expect you don't know what you're going to expect you don't know if you're going to have a child immediately after marriage you don't know that until you get married until after a month or two or three or one year or two years, you don't know when kids are going to come. So it's good that you start building your muscle. Before you get into marriage, start building your muscle of patience. Learn to wait. So that in, in the event that this, there is some kind of delay, that you will be able to wait. You have known, the Bible says, I've known whom I have believed. And I'm, I'm persuaded that he will Will, will answer me or will give me that he's able to do what he said to me. I'll find a verse of the Bible very soon and I'll read it out for you. Maybe I'll put it in the description bell below. I have a little blank here. But we should learn to wait. When we have prayed to God and we are sure that God is leading us, we should learn to wait. If we find delay in marriage, there's nothing wrong with you. God might be preparing a Samuel for you. Learn to wait. So have an open mind. Be ready. Build on your faith. Build on patience. Build on your relationship with God so that whatever challenge you meet in marriage, you will be able to face it headlong and you will be able to stand the test of time. I know every one of us will have our children. God will provide. And for those who are already married and waiting, God in heaven that answered Anna will answer you. God that gave to Hannah that gave all those great children, Samson, and all of those children, the, the, John the Baptist, all these lovely children that came to these lovely mothers, God will give all of us children by his grace, according to his will. Secondly, another point is that we need to learn as a lady, talking to the ladies now, I'll talk to the men too, as a lady, you need to learn to take care of yourself, please. Please take care of yourself. Don't only look good when you come to see the man when you're outside, you're so neat, and your home, your house, your room is so disorganized. Please, let's work on it. There is nothing that you can't achieve. There is nothing that you can't get to. You just need to build on it. A habit is something that you do all the time, and before you know it, it becomes a part of you. It becomes second nature to you. Please work on your cleanliness. Make your bed when you stand up. When you get up from the bed in the morning after praying, make your bed. Clean your room. Clean yourself. Have a bath. Brush your teeth. Take care of your hair. Make your hair look nice. Wash your clothes. Work on these things. Do not procrastinate. Please start working on yourself now so that when you get married and you have, you're sad to do the responsibility of taking, of a man, taking care of a man, of children, of in-laws sometimes, and even yourself, even as a pregnant woman, you will be, you will just have this second nature of always having your bath, of always cleaning your house, of taking care of how you look, how you smell, how you feel to another person, brushing your feet nicely, keeping your environment clean. These are very important for the men also. Please, I know people think that women should be clean. People should be, women should smell nice. Men also need to smell nice, guys. Please clean yourself up, brush your feet. <laughs> if you need to shave, shave nicely. Look good. Cut your hair nicely. Look nice. Take care of your, your skin. 
Put some cream on your body. I know some men don't, don't cream themselves. Please anoint yourself, anoint your body, look nice. Because your wife wants you to look nice. We want, as women, we want our men to smell nice, to look nice. Please take care of yourself, wash your clothes. Wash, wash your underwears, be clean, be neat. Women also, men, please be clean. Young men, be clean, be decent, be organized. Even men, please be organized. And it makes it easier for the woman also that she, she, she doesn't have to go after you, uh, you know, pick things after you all the time. Doing it for the kids and doing it for the man is difficult. Please start to practice this little, little cleanliness and learn some of these small, small things. Okay, please. Another point also is that we should learn to be happy. This is something I'm going to dwell a little on. Learn to be happy. Some people think that, oh, I'm just depressed right now. Oh, I'm just feeling this way right now because I don't have a man. I'm very depressed. Please, if you have a problem of this depression, please get some help. I'll say it again. Please get some help. Talk to your pastors. Go to if you have to see um, a counselor. Please do so. If you need to see your doctor, do so. You need to fix your depression. You need to learn to be happy with your own self before you can think that you will be happy in your marriage. It's something that you work on yourself first before you can pass it on to another, to, 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 you can, you can, your happiness is like a bubbling water. It has to bubble from inside of you and it overflows to people that you meet, people that you know. The Bible says as a man thinketh, so is he. Work on your mind, work on your thoughts. Start to read books, read the word of God. The Bible says let the word of God dwell richly in you. The word of God that dwell richly in you will help you. Pray to God. Deal with your depression. Deal with your unhappiness, constant unhappiness. Find peace and joy, even in your own self. Because I trust me, ladies, men, trust me. Marriage is a good thing, but it will not fix your depression. It will not fix your always depressive self. It won't. Rather, it might overflow to this young man that is getting married to you. Your home might be a gloomy place, an unhappy place. No, please, please, brethren, fix your depression. If you have depression, fix that state of mind. Deal with it before you get married. Marriage is not all please, all bed of roses. No, there are thorns. There are challenges that can come. Your spouse will not always make you happy. They, your spouse cannot give you that happiness. They can try their best, but if you have a situation of depression, people that are depressed, they see the world from a gloomy place, from a gloomy vision, from a gloomy perspective. And it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an illness, okay? It's an illness. In this part of the world, they get counselors. Sometimes they take medication and they, we try to find the root cause of the problem of the depression and deal with it. If it's something that has to do with hormones, that has to be with, that has to do with something biological, you can get medical help. If it's something that's spiritual, please deal with your spiritual life so that this depression can be adequately dealt with before you get into marriage. Because your spouse, your husband, your wife cannot, cannot make you happy if you're not a happy person. Please work on that thing. Work on that depression and become a happy person. Please. And uh, that will make me, that will remind us to read this verse of the Bible. Okay. I know that some people might be going through some of those stages in, in Proverbs. In, in, uh, pro, wait, let me just open Psalms chapter 128 Psalms chapter 128 from verse 2 and it says blessed is from verse 1 first blessed is blessed is everyone that feareth the lord that walketh in his ways for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands happy thou shalt be and it shall be well with you it shall be well with you you will be happy. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You will be happy. 
And why should you not even be happy? Why should you not be happy when you have God as your father? When you have the most high God, the God of heaven and the earth, why should you not be happy? Why? Please, let us take it to the Lord. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 33 from verse 28, it says, happy art thou, Israel. Happy art thou, put your name there. Happy art thou, O you, say your name, O princess, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. The fact that, that we are saved by the Lord, the fact that we are saved by grace, it's enough to make us happy. We are happy people. Praise the Lord. We have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. We are happy people. Because the Lord is the, sh is the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon the high places. We should be happy. Happy because the Lord is our God. The God of heaven and the earth is our, our maker. He is our shield. He is our help. Go to God for help. And God will make all the gloominess to depart. He will take away your unhappiness. He will fill your heart with joy. You will not stay unhappy. I'll pray for you if you are depressed. I saw one of the posts of somebody that asked for prayers. The Lord will touch every depressed person and will heal you from depression, will take away depression and put the joy of the Lord in your heart. If you've not given your heart to Jesus, that's why you need Jesus in your heart. Call him, give him your heart. Tell him to be your Lord and save you. Ask him to forgive you for every wrongs that you've done and make him your friend. Like Zacchaeus, he was so happy when Jesus came to his house. If Jesus comes into your life and becomes your Lord and savior, you'll be the most happy person. Trust me, give it a shot and you will, you will testify. You will say, you will re you realize that it's a happy place to have Jesus as your friend. He's the best friend that you can ever have. Find him, please. Find him if you haven't. And that's, that takes us to the last point, which is that you need to learn to tolerate people. Learn to tolerate people. You're going to have in-laws. You're going to have brothers and sisters in-laws. Please, let's learn to tolerate people. You're going to have the friends of your spouse, your husband, your wife. This, that, 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 that people they've related with before they got married to you before they came together with you. These are people you have to relate with. You have to tolerate. You have to learn to accommodate people. Let me put it that way. It's better to, a better way to say, learn to accommodate, be accommodative. Be lovely to people. Because your in-laws might be lovely folks. They might also be otherwise. They might be unlovely, unfriendly people. How do you do? You have to live with those people. You have to converse with them. You have to relate with them. And that's why you need to work on yourself. Somebody said, if you can live with your roommate on campus, if you can live with a roommate, with a sister, with a brother, we, and tolerate them, it will be easier for you. But if you are such a person that cannot even tolerate your sister, your brother, a roommate, a flatmate, somebody, you can't tolerate another person, it's a problem, you need to fix it. Work on tolerating people, letting, let some things go. Don't be so, don't hold on to so many things. Oh, don't touch my bed. Oh, don't sit here. Oh, don't do that. Don't be so touchy. Don't be so difficult. Don't be so rigid. Learn to be flexible. Let people sometimes mess your things up. Then you can fix it later. It doesn't cost you anything to fix it. Have a large heart. You need a large heart to accommodate people. You need to learn to live with people. You need to learn to have a spirit of letting things go. Don't be somebody that always keeps malice, that always keeps grudges, that doesn't let things go easily. Oh, that person did this to me some years ago. He did it to me five years ago. He did it to me last year, two years, 10 years, and you don't let go. Please learn to let go. Take life easy. Hold life with such, such a loose hand. And everything, your possessions, anything that you hold there, hold it so loosely. And even when you lose it, you won't be so downcast. It won't be so difficult for you to move on. And that kind of person that is such a carefree person will be able to accommodate people, will be able to give people the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, no, it's okay. It happened like that. It's okay. I'll let go of it. I won't hold on to it. 
and work on it gradually. When you see yourself going towards a tendency of being a little bit too selfish, too, too difficult to deal with, too unaccommodating, work on yourself. Read books, talk to people, go to uh, groups, join groups of people who talk about how to better yourself, how to build your interpersonal relationship. And I know that if you work on yourself, you will see results. It won't come immediately. It won't come the first day, the two, the, just in a month, but start working on yourself. And as time goes on, at least before you get married, you would, you'd loosen up a little bit and you'll be able to be more accommodating. I pray the Lord gives us wisdom. As we have read earlier, the Lord will give us wisdom. The Lord will give us understanding. The Lord will help us to have happy homes. The Lord will help us to be the best of ourselves in our marriage. Marriage is a work. It's a, much, it's, it's a, it's a work. It's, it's, a, it's a daily job. You work at it. You make it work. Every day you give it your best so that the marriage works. Marriage is a coming together of two imperfect people in a relationship, in a home, to build a home, to start something perfect, which is marriage. And I pray that, I hope and pray that you will be tolerative. And that doesn't mean that you should tolerate nonsense. No, I'm saying be, toler be, be someone that tolerates that things that you can just let go. Work on learning to let go a couple of things so that you can be happy, so that people around you can be happy, so that people can enjoy being around you. I pray the Lord will give us a, an answer of peace. God will give us peace in our homes. God will give us peace in ourselves. As, as always, I pray for you. I'll continue to pray for you. All who are going through one challenge or the other, I'm praying for you. I have you in my heart. I, I, I'm praying for you. And the Lord will meet you. The Lord will heal your heart. The Lord will take you out of depression. The Lord will make you a happy person. The Lord will prepare you for your home. God bless you. I hope to see you another time. Remain blessed. Peace.